Fundamental problem F3-7 says, determine the magnitude of forces F1, F2, F3, so that the particle is held in equilibrium. And remember, equilibrium just basically means that all forces are equal to zero. And now at first glance, this might look like a bit of a messy problem with the 3D geometry and all these forces going all over the place as well as these three slope triangles that we have. But really all we need to do is just basically multiple projections, along with, of course, just finding forces through equilibrium like we normally do. And so starting off here, uh, the first thing I'll do is set my positive directions for all the three planes, X, Y, and Z. And now to solve the forces, let's go ahead and start with the X direction. So for equilibrium, we of course set the sum of forces in the x direction equal to zero with this direction as positive, which points to the left and towards us. And now of course here we have a 600 Newton force that's going right along that positive x axis. So this will be positive 600 Newtons. And then back here we have force F2, which points in the negative direction but still along this x-axis, so that's minus F2. And now we still have another force that points along the x direction, and that is force F3 here. Since we're given a projection of this force onto this flat plane, just like so, which indicates that it has a component along the x direction. And so to help visualize this, let's say you are looking top down on this plane, where if I draw the top view of this, we'd have this 2D X and Y plane, where the Y is basically the negative side and the X, the positive. The projection of F3 onto this plane will essentially look something like this as a diagonal force with the three, four, five slope triangle that is given in the diagram. And now from here, we'll be able to obtain the X component of force F3. So now first, let's try to actually project this F3 force onto this flat plane. And so as you can see, we're given a slope triangle at the current position of force F3. And so using the slope triangle, the side of the triangle that is parallel to this flat surface is three. So since this side corresponds to this flat surface from proportions, this will simply end up being F3 times three over the hypotenuse, which is five. So the value of F3 projected onto the surface is simply F3 times three fifths. And now we can project this F3 times three fifths over to our X axis to obtain the X component. And again, we do this by using the slope triangle where side three again corresponds to the X axis as it is parallel to the X axis. So this will be, again, times three fifths. And of course, this final projection points towards the positive x axis. So this will be plus F3 times three fifths times three fifths. And that completes our equation one. I'll just go ahead and quickly color code these two forces. And remember, this whole expression is just one force. And so now we can move on to the summation of forces in the y direction equal to zero. And so looking at the diagram again here, again, we have F3, which shares a component in the negative y direction, as we previously saw. So we'll have F3 projected on the y, which I'll call F3y. So previously we had F3x, which is essentially this expression in green. So now using the same steps we use to find the X component, we will use them to find the Y component by focusing on our original F3 projection in blue here. So now we'll shift this force onto our Y axis. And as you can see from the slope triangle, this corresponds to side four as that side is parallel to the y-axis. And again, this will result in a negative y component. 
So this will essentially be negative F3 3 fifths times 4 over 5. And so that expression is F3y. And now we have a remaining force in the y direction, which is force F1, which points towards the positive y direction. Now this one's simpler to project since it just requires one projection onto the y-axis. So we can just directly obtain the y component by using this single slope triangle. And so here, once again, 4 is correspondent to the y component. So therefore, the y component of F1 is simply F1 times 4 over 5. And that completes our sum of forces in the y direction. And now to maybe avoid confusion, I'll just, for example, go ahead and write down the complete triangle similarity proportion here for F1, where we can have the fraction F1 over 5, since F1 can be considered the big hypotenuse and 5 the small, and F1y over 4, where F1y is the large bottom side of the triangle. So now solving for F1y, multiplying the 4 to the left side, we are of course left with F1y is equal to F1 times 4 fifths, which is the expression we previously had. So as a shortcut, you just need to know which side of the triangle corresponds to the axis of the component you're trying to solve for, and setting the original force times that side over the hypotenuse should suffice. So now let's solve the forces along the z-axis. So we'll set the sum of forces along the z-axis equal to zero, with up as positive. And so here we have a downwards 900 newton force. So that'll be negative 900 newtons. And then we also have force F1 that acts along the z-axis. And so using the slope triangle that's given, we'll have to project this force F1 into the z-axis. And the corresponding side of the triangle is 3. So in that case, F1z will be F1 times 3 over 5. And lastly, we also have force F3 which also has a component along the z-axis. So we can project F3 onto the z-axis, obtaining F3z. And in this case, the corresponding side is 4. And unlike last time where we had to use both silk triangles, given the geometry, we can just directly project F3 onto the z-axis. And so this ends up being F3 times 4 over 5, which completes this equation. So we now have a total of three equations. And since we also have a total of three unknowns, we can go ahead and solve algebraically. Specifically, we can use the substitution method. So for example, looking at equation 2 here, I'll go ahead and isolate F1, which gives us F1 is equal to the F3y expression times the reciprocal of 4 over 5, which is 5 over 4. And just simplifying the right side here, this is equivalent to F1 equals F3 times 0 0.6. So now that we have an expression for F1, we can go ahead and substitute it into the third equation. So we'll have 0 equals negative 900 newtons plus the 0 0.6 times F3 and then times the 3 fifths in the F1z expression plus 4 over 3 times F3. And here I just kept all the F3 terms in orange. And now I'll just go ahead and simplify the 0 0.6 times 3 fifths and add the negative 900 newtons to the left side. So this will leave us with 0 0.36 F3 plus 4 fifths F3 is equal to 900 newtons. And now we can go ahead and add these two like terms, which ends up being 1.16 F3. 
and this is equal to 900 newtons. And so here we can divide the 1.16 to the right side, which will leave us with force F3 being equal to roughly 775.86 newtons. And so now we can use this F3 value to solve for F2 in equation one. So substituting in the 775 newtons into equation one and isolating F2, we get F2 equals 600 plus the 775.86 times the two three fifths. And so solving this in a calculator, we get roughly 879.31. So hence the magnitude of force F2 is roughly 879.31 newtons. And finally, we can solve for F1, substituting in our F3 value into this simple equation. So from equation two, we have F1 is equal to 775.86 times 0.6. So hence, the force F1 is equal to 465.52 newtons. So we have now found the magnitudes of all three forces.